flush tube number 14. Yet another three weeks have passed, so I am just going to talk you through my stitching progress. My name is Hanneke, for those who don't know me yet, so if you're new here, you're very welcome. If you have been here before, thank you very much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate uh, you taking the time and I hope that whilst you're watching this, you're doing some stitching or something crafty um, to keep yourself busy. I'd also like to give a special thank you for those who have sent me an email over the past weeks, months. Uh, I do put my email in the description box. And some of you have just sent me an email, sometimes just a kind email, sometimes to give me a tip or some advice, which I think is just very, very kind. So uh, for those of you who have done that, thank you very much. And for those of you who would like to do that, you're very welcome to. I, I really do appreciate it. I have about 10 pieces next to me, one of which is fully finished. And then um, quite a lot are progress. Uh, so I haven't started as many as I started last time or the time before. Uh, because now I just need to do the stitching. Uh, which has been lovely. I've had three nice weeks actually. It wasn't as busy as it was before that. And my parents have visited me last weekend. Which was very nice. And so I've had uh, I've had lovely weeks. I had a bit of travelling. I went to Deventer. Which is in the middle of the Netherlands. And I went there to uh, for something uh, work related. But I did do some stitching on my travel piece. So that was fun as well. So we'll just go through it. I think it won't be as long a flush tube as you're used to. But then again, I might just be chatting away and it might end up being um, long as usual. <laughs> so we'll see. I will start with my uh, fully finished. And this is a bit scary because it is a pattern that I designed. And I'm not a designer. I don't claim to be a designer, um, but I wanted to make a small pillow. I like making pillows and um, I've made quite a lot of Shan and Christine pieces into pillows for Christmas. But this time I just wanted to make a regular pillow that I can just have out and about um, all the time. And the kind of pillow I wanted to stitch, I couldn't find it anywhere and I did look everywhere. So I thought, why don't I try to make it myself? So that's what I did. And I I really like the finished piece. So it is a small, I will try to show it. So it says Jesus loves me, which I think is an important message. And it is with four colors of DMC on, I think, an Ada. And I'm going to say this wrong. But I think you say Nuga. And it sort of shines up slightly pink, very light pink, uh, with the colours that I've chosen, which I really like. And the colours are, oh, I'm not sure. I will put that on the screen next to me. If you would be interested in this colour combination, it's two greens and two pinkish colours, sort of old pink. And then I got the fabric in very similar colours from a shop nearby. This bit of whatever it is, I I have in my stash. I have a lot of that kind of stuff. And then the button I found somewhere in a craft shop nearby. So that's my my own design, which is a bit weird, but there you are. And I really enjoyed stitching it. I thought it was really nice to do. It didn't take overly long, but it did have a few good sessions in it because these blocks are quite stitch heavy. Uh, and they are the same. They are the same blocks. I just inverted the colour. So these two are stitched exactly the same. And the other two as well. But then I inverted the colours uh, completely. So yeah, I really enjoyed stitching this. 
Now, for those who look at this and think I would enjoy stitching that too, uh, I put it on my Etsy account. I don't dare to say Etsy shop because there's only one pattern in it, and that's this one. So it's not a shop yet, but it is on my Etsy account. Uh, so if you'd be interested, uh, feel free to put this um, in your basket and then do wait a little bit because I did put something in it that if you put it in your basket, uh, you will get a discount automatically. So don't don't purchase it immediately. Put it in your card or your basket and then wait for a little bit. You will get a discount and then I would, you know, you can purchase it. It's not expensive. Uh, so for those who are interested, you can get it on Etsy. I will put the link in my uh, description box, as I always do. And I think it is about 61 by 66 stitches, something like that. So it is not very big. You can use any scrap of fabric that you have, uh, usually, because it's just tiny. I sent a picture to my mum and she apparently thought it was quite big because when she came over here and she saw this and she said, oh, it's very small. So, so yeah, it is very small. It's only tiny. But I think the result is very lovely. So, yeah, I had a lovely time doing this. I had a lovely time designing it and then picking the colours and finding a fabric that I liked. So I really enjoyed the process. I'm not sure I will do it a lot and very often because it does take a lot of time. And usually when I have time off, I just want to stitch because that's what really relaxes me and makes me feel happy. But in this case, uh, I think it was on a Saturday or a Sunday where I thought I'm just going to try and make something that I would love to stitch. And so I did. So, yeah, I enjoyed the process, but I don't think it will be a weekly thing for me. <laughs> but, yeah, happy, happy with the results. And um, it really fits my uh, my whole green um, living room. So that's that. Now I'm going to pause for a second because I have forgotten to put out the white uh, board that I used to show you the pieces. So I'm just going to pause and then uh, I'll be back. Right, back again with my white board. I will start with my um, new start. And I looked it up, but I have forgotten the name of this. It is an, another art mini by Nikki Patton. And it is, let me check my phone, The Soul of the Rose by Waterhouse. And I will put a picture on the screen. And it is a lovely lady with sort of reddish hair smelling a rose. And I thought that was very pretty. And so this is my start. So this is very much a start. I have plenty left to do. But it was a lovely piece to stitch on. And the colours are very, very nice indeed. And I stitch all my art minis on 16 count Ada. And then I put it in a tiny frame from Action 10 by 10 and that I purchased a lot of because now they are all out of stock and you can't, can't really find them anywhere. So I luckily I have a whole stack and I can just keep going stitching these minis and adding to my collection. So this is smelling, no sorry, the soul of the rose and that's a lady smelling a rose. And this is my start. So I will continue that, but I'm really enjoying this piece. I think it's very pretty. And as all the minis, they just have such a tremendous detail despite being so small. The next one I want to show you is from UB Designs and it is uh, in my best German, Rot trifft Schwarz. Again, that's my best German. I'm really sorry for those who are German. And um, I really enjoy this. It is not really my colours, but on this piece, I think it's absolutely perfect. And I really enjoyed stitching on this. So when I went to Deventer, I took this one with me as well because it is quite an easy piece to stitch and you don't always need 
a pattern. So I have been stitching on this quite a lot. So the last time I showed you, I had this, this one uh, stitched in. And so now I have added the black with ro uh, red, whatever that is, leaves. And I've started this one, which will also have a red flower in. Uh, but obviously I'm not there yet. I think this is absolutely lovely. This is stitched on a 16 count and the coverage with a DMC black is quite okay. It's okay enough anyway. And like, as you can see, there's once, once you've stitched the red in here and you've stitched all these little squares in, in it that are gray, the black is just, you just have to fill in. So I've done quite a lot of that when I was uh, in Daventer. Yeah, this is a lovely, lovely piece. I really enjoy this, really enjoy this. It's quite different from all the other things I stitch. It is full coverage. And then it has all these squares or sections. So you can divide it up quite easily as well, which I like. So I've been really, really enjoying this. And I've done quite a bit on it. And normally I don't really enjoy stitching with black either. But with this one, it was just the, the whole thing, the whole red branch was coming out. And I just, I really enjoyed that. So this is one of those where you just keep stitching because you want to see what it's going to look like. So yeah, you just keep going. It's very, very pretty. And all my little needle minders like this, I get from a French shop on Etsy, which is very cute. So that's red meets black. See, I can't say it properly in English. I used to be quite good in German. We have German in school uh, when we're younger. We have English, Dutch, obviously, and then German and French. And I always enjoyed German, but if you don't do it for a long time, you do lose it. So this is my next one. This is a spring sampler. I keep calling it my black mandala, which makes no sense, but I'm stitching it on black and it is a mandala. Uh, but the actual name is spring sampler. And I have been stitching quite a bit on this again. Um, so I've moved further into the mandala and I've added, I think, this blue uh, blue flower. Now, as I've said before, this is difficult stitching. So I tend to do one leaf or one flower a day or and then I continue with something else because it is it does take a lot of my concentration to do this properly. And when I'm tired, I, I don't even look at this. <laughs> so it, it really depends on how I'm feeling, if I can actually stitch on this. But once I've finished whatever I wanted to do that day and I look at it, I just I just love it. I think it is so, so pretty. Now again, the light makes it slightly overexposed. But the colours are just sort of jumping off the black. Oh, that's better. Look at that. That is very, very pretty. Very pretty. It has a lot of colors in. There are a lot of color changes if you stitch it like this. Now, I saw recently that she has this in many different color, um, color ways. So she also has it in sort of purple and green, which is also very pretty. And I have chosen one with, which has basically all the colors of the rainbow. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm just loving this. And I don't know if you choose purple and green, if you would have less color changes. You, you very well might, uh, compared to this one. There you are. Very pretty. So I will just keep chugging along on this one and do little bits and pieces throughout the days. And then hopefully at some point it'll be beautiful. Now the next one is um, Moon Deer by Owl Forest Embroidery. 
And last time I showed you a green that I had, which was Oscar. And I wasn't sure whether I was going to continue with Oscar because it looked very much um, very similar to Driftwood, which was another color I'm using on this. So this is Oscar. Um, so this is green, but it looks quite brownish um, and very similar to the to the brownish that I am actually using. So I then went on to um, the Han Boutique's uh, website and went through several greens. One of you said maybe guacamole was a good color, so I did look, but it was slightly too light um, for my liking. But I did find um, bullfrog. And that's the one I went for, and I'm very happy with Bullfrog. So it is um, a brighter green, and actually I can't get it properly on, onto the screen. It doesn't look as bright as it does actually in real life. Let me just see. Oh, that's better. That's better. A bit better. Uh, but yeah, I am really loving it. It also has a much um, has much more difference in the green colors that are in this strand. So with this one, it is all relatively the same color. It does have a little bit of color change from the dye, but it is very similar. This one has quite a change. You go from quite light green to quite dark green. And I, I quite like that. It does mean that it's more difficult in stitching. And I will show you that now. And if anyone has a good tip, then I am all ears. Now, this piece is absolutely lovely. It is an absolute delight stitch. And I stitch it on ivory, 20 count Ada. And then I stitch with one strand of the week's dye works that I, uh, that I use. So last time I showed you, I had these motifs done, and now I have been moving into the full-on picture. And so this is the color I just mentioned, driftwood. And then we have the green and the purple is majestic purple, I think that's what it's called. And I love driftwood. I think that one is coming out beautifully. You can see the slight color changes in that in that strand, and it's very subtle. I like the purple as well. It's sort of it's really uh, popping off this uh, this fabric, which is slightly lighter than the fabric that um, uh, Forest Owl Owl Forest Embroidery has on their picture. Uh, it's just a green. As you can see, because I stitch in rows, you can sort of see the uh, the colors come out in rows as well. And I'm not sure I like that. It doesn't bother me. I'm just wondering if anyone would stitch it differently. It's just that if you would go up rather than horizontally, you would have those rows when you go up. So I have no idea how anyone else would stitch this or whether you would also stitch like this. And this is how it comes out. It did come out sort of similarly on the picture from uh, our forest embroidery. So that sort of made me happy. But it becomes a very, uh, it basically becomes stripes. But as you can see, the green is really popping and, and now fits in very well with the purple that is also popping. And then the other two colors are more in the background and um, putting it all together. Yeah, I'm really loving this. I'm now moving on to the big purple flower here. And then I will stitch the other side before I move on to the deer. And the deer, I think, is that was the thing that made me fall in love with this piece. So I can't wait to stitch that. But it's it's just a lovely piece to stitch. It is quite long, so quite of my a lot of my fabric is just rolled up. Um, so yeah, this will be quite a big piece in the end, even though I stitch it on twenty count. Uh, so it is tiny, but it's lovely stitching, absolutely lovely stitching. So yeah, and I've looked at other patterns from 
forest owl, owl forest embroidery. Um, and I saw one in their free patterns. Someone emailed me and mentioned somewhere in there that they have quite nice freebies. And there was one in there that I thought, oh, I'd love to stitch that. So I might very well do that one day. So I'm loving that piece. My next piece is my travel piece. So I stitch on this in the train and it is Rainbow Kaleidoscope by Vistas on Etsy. And this is a piece um, where I was bold enough to contact Vivian and say, I would like your kaleidoscope pattern, but then with different colors that she used in a different pattern. And she made it for me in a couple of hours. And I have been loving stitching this because it is easy stitching. You don't have to do much thinking or counting or, or whatever, but you can still work with all these beautiful colors. And that's what I love. And I stitched it on this on a 16 count. And I do that on purpose because when I'm in the train, you don't always have great lighting. Uh, so a 16 count is just, I think it's the most easy count you can work on. And I still like the outcome. So there you go. It's becoming something. And I have moved, I'm moving away from the blues now and I'm moving into the greens. And uh, I love that. I prefer to stitch with green. And it becomes this absolutely gorgeous piece. I'm quite happy with this. Now, the pattern has a blue 939, which is my least favorite DMC color, all around the whole piece. I haven't stitched that as uh, up until now. I haven't stitched that. But I might. I'm not sure yet. Um, so far, I quite like it without without that uh, that row. So there you go. Beautiful colours, and obviously, I have only used a few of the colours that will eventually uh, come in here, which will be purples and oranges and yellows. So yeah, I'm not nearly there. Lots of pink, but I do really think it's pretty. And it's so easy. It has, it looks very much like Carolyn Manning uh, designs with just the little squares. Uh, whereas these are often triangles. And sometimes you suddenly get a blob where you have like this one. It's quite a lot of the same color. Now, a few times I have broken it into pieces and stitched it with different colors. So at some point there was quite a lot of 939 that I... Uh, made into, I think, two or three different colors. Because I like the I like the color changes on this. I think that's what makes this an amazing piece. So yes, I have been happy, happy stitching this. And as always, people comment on it when I'm in a train, especially the person who checks the tickets. Um, so yeah, they don't see that all the time. Now my next piece is a piece that I've been working on for quite a while now. And it is from Leonid Afremov, who has done the, the artwork. And then Artisy have uh, done the, have made the chart. And I have been stitching, I think I've done about 750 stitches on this, which is quite a bit. And I am basically moving up. I am now over 70%. I think I'm 70.8% or something. So it is really uh, moving along. I've done quite a bit here on this color piece. And this morning I stitched uh, this basically, um, which is also a lot of color. All I've got left to do is a lot of color. And so I love that, but it does mean it's a lot of confetti. So I, I just take my time with it basically. You can see in the pieces that I'm working at, it's just so many colors that come together slowly. And the result is so beautiful, but stitching it can be a bit, um, can be difficult. But it's so pretty. It's so pretty. And I love all those colors. 
I do use parking on this one. I don't, it is the only piece I use parking on. And that's just because it's easier, uh, because of the confetti. Uh, and I don't like just to keep going and keep going into, um, and just to finish a color. I know some of you do that as well, where you just stitch and stitch until one color is completely finished. Um, but I, I'm very, very scared to miscount at some point. And then, uh, yeah, I, I don't want to do that. So I park it. And um, that's why I have all these threads uh, hanging on there. And this is on a 16 count. I was on Facebook and someone posted a picture at 70%, also starting from the bottom up. Uh, and she did the big one. So I have the mini and she had a big one. That was lovely to see, but I'm quite happy with my mini. I think, uh, yeah, I love the mini. I'm happy with all these colors that come together. I hope you can see something because I can't. Very happy stitching this. Then I stitched on the piece from Gracewood Stitches by Kathy. And I stitch on this on an Ada 18 count in a, an unknown color. I This was a fabric that I got from uh, a fair that I went to uh, somewhere in Belgium. And they had all these fabrics piled up and you could get four for the price of three, I think. But there was no name on it. But I think it's perfect for this piece. And then I stitch with Soie d'Alger, uh, one strand white. So there we are. I've done another circle in here. And then I continued this border all the way around. So now I have um, almost two of those rounds to do. And then the first, bo the first border is a... Um, it's not a border, the first row is finished, but that is uh, still a bit away. And one of these takes a lot of stitching. And what I also found is I stitched this one when I was in Isle of Wight and I was uh, sick. So when I was stitching the third one and I kept, look, kept looking back to the second one, I kept seeing mistakes. And it wasn't so much mistakes, it was more that there were missing stitches. So I went back several times to add in those missing stitches. So it, you can, that really tells you that for me to stitch on this, I need to be fit and I need to be not sick because it is difficult stitching. It's very easy to miss a stitch. And because it's not full coverage um, and you won't go past it with another color, you won't see it because you don't, you don't get back to that bit. So that's, um, yeah, you really need to focus. But the result is very pretty, I think. And Soir d'Alger is, I think, my absolute favorite f um, thread. Because it's so nice, it doesn't break. It's, uh, which is something I do notice with the Weak Style Works. Uh, I do now cut shorter strands and that does help. Uh, but with this one, I can just do a long strand and it's absolutely fine. It's soft um, to work with. And I think the result is beautiful because this is, I think, perfect coverage on an 18 count with white. And we all know that stitching white on, on a color can be difficult to have your stitches to be, look neat. And I think with the silk, it's, um, it looks neat, neat enough for me anyway. So I love this, love this. And I will continue this bit by bit. Then I have my Winter Garden by Jackie Bow on Etsy. And this piece is something I started recently. 
Um, I felt it was a good substitute for my winter robins. It has a very similar vibe of a, you know, very wintry uh, piece. And I'm loving it. I'm really loving this stitch. This doesn't go into um, Pattern Keeper. That makes it for me more difficult to read. So I just read off a PDF that I have still in Pattern Keeper, uh, but I just opened a PDF in there. So I, that for me is more difficult to read. Um, and it would have been absolutely perfect if it wasn't Pattern, pattern Keeper. Uh, but for now, I, um, I manage because it is not a difficult pattern at all. So there you go. That's the watering can that is coming to life with beautiful teals and light blues. And then I also finished the leaves on the side here. And I've continued a bit of the um, snow down there. And the thing is, this is white, obviously. And then there's a bit of white here as well. But that white doesn't seem to be as white and I wasn't sure what to do with that, um, because if you go here, you really see a difference between the white that is here and the white that is there. So I might have to take out the white that is less white and restitch that with white. I don't know yet. It might have been blanc. Maybe I stitched it with blanc. I don't know. But here we are. And like I said, I love this piece and it's it, it stitches quite quickly. Um, so, yeah, it has not been uh, difficult. And I was I was worried that it would be more difficult and more color changes. But I'm quite happy to find that it isn't. And I've already sort of here where the little bird is sitting. And I stitched this on Ada 18 count pewter grey, pearl grey, not entirely sure. I have some stains on this fabric and I hate that, um, but hope that I can stitch over it uh, or I can find something to take it out. And if I can't take it out, I will, and if, if I can't stitch over it using the pattern, I will just make some snowy motifs or something um, to add to there. But this is very pretty. It's really coming to life. I love it. So yes, I will continue stitching that. And for those of you who have watched me more often, you know that I don't use um, a WIBGO board and I don't some of you spin a wheel and then check what you're stitching. I don't do any of that. So I just come home after a day's work and I decide what kind of colours I want to stitch with. If I want to stitch with multiple colors or just one, I just sort of check my mood. If I'm really tired, there's quite a few that just I, I won't look at. Uh, so it just depends on how I feel. That's what I'm stitching. Uh, so, yeah, that's my preferred way of doing it. And I do try to make sure that I have about eight to ten pieces to show on my next floss tube. So I do sort of keep an eye on... Um, making sure that I stitch different things. Uh, and maybe if I didn't have a floss tube, I would stitch more often on something like Moon Deer, for instance, um, because I really love that piece. But what I love about having a floss tube and working on different pieces is that you slowly see everything grow, and it's also pretty. And it's really nice to stitch things that really match with how you're feeling in that point at that point. So I really like that. My next one is my landmarks. Now this is going to be a big piece because there are 60 of these and I will stitch about 40, 54 of these. Now there's a few I don't like that I won't stitch, but most of them I do like. And I have added yet another two and this is obviously Sydney Opera House. And I think that's a very pretty one. It was very blue. 
and it had um, uh, a lot of similar colors because you have this the sea down there and then you have the sky up there so it felt like I was stitching with a lot of blue uh, but still uh, I think it came out really nice and I am quite happy with it. I was looking on my phone for the other one. It is the Great Mosque. And yesterday I was looking it up because I wasn't sure. Um, oh, the Great Mosque of Cordova in Spain. So that is my second mosque. That's a mosque and that's a mosque. And again, even though they're tiny, they come out beautifully. Now my next one will be sort of a tower in Dubai. I forgot the name. And then after that, it is a very, very pretty one. Um, Tiger's Nest, I think in Bhutan, but I'm not sure. And so I've got two lovely ones lined up and that will really, uh, again, add to the full picture of this, because I think that's what makes this so pretty. Um, yeah, they just keep adding. And they are, very, look at that, that's very pretty, isn't it? Gives such a beautiful effect. I love this one. I think that's so intricate, even though it's uh, small. And the same go for these. I think those are very pretty as well. And like I said, Sydney, when I was making it, I wasn't sure because I was seeing only blue. But then when I finished it, I thought that actually is very nice. And I think it will be even nicer if I have some green up here. So I will make sure to put one in there that has quite a bit of green on. So then you can sort of uh, blend it all together again. And as you can see, because this was sort of all lonely and alone by itself with the reddish colours, it had a bit of those colours in here as well. So you can already see how that is pulling, um, well, coming together, basically. So, yeah, I love this. Looking forward to the next two. And this is a piece that I often stitch on in the mornings because it is quite easy. And um, I stitch before I go to work, basically. So I wake up early and I do about an hour of stitching. And I don't, it's not that I have to do a certain amount of stitches every day or so, but I just do a bit of stitching and then I go to work. <laughs> That's basically how it works. That's it. That's all my progress. Now, I did do some shopping as well because I um, I got a lovely email from a viewer saying, do you know this website? And you can get some uh, lovely pieces from there. And they have a sale on. So I bought another Bothy Thread kit, the one with the mouses and with the shrimps. I think that's what they're called. And I will put it on the screen. And then I have a kit from Magic Needle, because as you all know, I really enjoyed my lilacs. Now I have another kit from um, Magic Needle as well that I might start. It's sort of like a castle with um, beautiful purple flowers. The kit I bought is one with roses and a, um, uh, what's it called, a stitching, it's not a frame. It's like a like a circle that we use a hoop. There we go. That's the word I was looking for. Um, so it has roses and a hoop, and then it has a little hat on the side that has pins in it. I'm not sure about that little hat, so I might leave that out and just continue the hoop. Um, but I'm not sure. And then I bought some fabrics as well that have. Uh, because they had Ada, but then they had dyed Ada. So um, uh, it's not one color, but it has those color changes in it. So I thought that would be nice to, to try. So uh, the person who commented and emailed me uh, with that, thank you very much. I do appreciate that. It's very kind. And that's that. That's all I have to share today. So thank you very much again for watching. If you uh, enjoyed it, you can give me a like. If uh, you're not yet subscribed, uh, you could consider doing that. And um, 
Again, if you like this pattern, have a look on Etsy where you can find it. And again, don't purchase it immediately, but put it in your shopping cart so you can get some, some discount. And that is that. I thank you all very much for watching. Wishing you a lovely Sunday tomorrow. And then I'll see you again in about three weeks time. Thank you.